Hello and welcome to the Fave English podcast, your one-stop shop for Venezuelan football in English, bringing you fortnightly episodes dedicated to the Venezuelan league, the national teams and the myriad of Venezuelan players around the world. Today we are joined by Karim Asafo, former sporting director of Venezuela's two biggest clubs, Deportivo Tatra and Caracas Football Club. Karim is now a highly successful agent for Venezuelan football players based between Caracas and Miami. It's a pleasure to have you here today, Karim. How are you? Fine, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jordan, for having me in your podcast. Uh, I appreciate that. And um, I'm very happy to, to speak about uh, Liga Futve and uh, Venezuelan football. It's really great for us to have somebody that not only is, is, is fluent in English, but also has a long history with the league in, in various roles because you're perfectly placed to, to talk about how things have changed um, over the, the past 20, 30 years even. Um, and, and there's specifically a few hot points in Venezuelan football at the moment that um, I know you have uh, opinions on, for example, the, the juvenile rule, which we'll get into later. But I'd like to start um, by, by talking about your, your history with Venezuela's two biggest clubs, like I said, Deportivo Tatra and Caracas Football Club, where for, for listeners that aren't too familiar with Venezuelan football, being the sporting director of, of those two clubs would be like going from Manchester United to Manchester City or from, from Liverpool to Everton. So let, let's start with that. And let's start, because Deportivo Tatra are the, the current reigning champions of Venezuelan football, let's start with that. What were your experiences like as the, the sporting director of, of Deportivo Tatra? Um, I start too young. Uh, now I'm an old man, but uh, I start too young at 25 years old. Uh, start working in Caracas Football Club. In in that moment, uh, really, I don't know anything about the management uh, of a team. This is my my real question ab about that. But um, always involved in in football as a coach. I was a uh, a coach for a younger teams uh, in, in Caracas, uh, also worked uh, in futsal. Um, I started in futsal um, working with players and with, with different teams in different clubs, social clubs, uh, more than that. And, um, and I received an opportunity when, when I tried to forget the football, I received an opportunity in Caracas Football Club because I I was graduating in, in, in as a pharmacist in in my university Santa Maria University um, and I tried to work as a pharmacist in Laboratorios Vargas the same owner of the Caracas Football Club but in my first month I received a call from the from the owner from the president Mr Guillermo Valentiner and he told me, you will be uh, the general manager of the Caracas Football Club. And I said, what? Yes, I want you to, 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 to work in, in that position. And I said, yes. In my mind, I tried to say no. But in, in my mouth, it said yes. And the story started uh, in, in, in 1996. Exactly, and uh, and uh, was an amazing time in Caracas Football Club in two periods because I I make a, I make a pause or stop and I work in the in the football federation as a competitions director for two years and then um, I receive again a call from from the owner from Caracas Football Club. If you ask me why I. I did this post, uh, it's simple. Uh, in my first period, I, I worked very hard uh, to develop the, the younger teams and to develop the whole uh, club um, because uh, only the team was the first team and tried to win the titles and uh, put in the, uh, the better players uh, in Venezuela, in the in the first team, um, we have the, um, more than ten players from the national team in this Caracas Football Club, 
but my core or my my thoughts uh, was in in uh, in building the uh, the younger teams you know and uh, sometimes i'm not understanding what the owner want uh, and then the owner want to win every game every game every title we play we play he want he want to win obviously but i focused in 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 develop the whole uh um, club and then i make a pause and when i return it i understanding what uh what he needs i i start to uh to win championships and and win every game that we face it uh this is my story in caracas football club but in 2006 uh i i announced my no continue in in the club because uh i have new uh new projects and um Mr. Philip Valentiner, the the son of the of Mr. Guillermo, uh, they start uh, to work with me, and uh, obviously, he want to 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 take more decisions in in the in the club. And understanding that, I I prefer um, build or start new projects for me. And this is my story in Venezuelan football. And then, and then I started in 2007, 2007 um, three guys uh, called me for a meeting and uh, they told me, uh, hey Karim, we want to buy Tachira, Deportivo Tachira. And I said, it's a good idea uh, if you want to lose money. But they say, why? Because uh, I, I said in this moment that uh, the football is not a great business, uh, strictly in football. And then they told me why then too much people own uh, clubs, own our football clubs. I said, it's simple. You can, you can do money by other business around the football, but not specifically in football. And then, for example, if you own a Deportivo Táchira, your connections will be with the uh, governor of the city, will be with the biggest um, companies in the, in the city, and then you can do a lot of business around the football. And uh, the guy said, okay, you are convinced us to, to, to buy the team, but with one condition. It was that I uh, I joined, I joined them in the club as a partner. Okay, and then I said, okay, yes, let's start. Let's start, and uh, we build the team from zero. Uh, when when the when those owners um, make the first payment for for the club to 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 take the club, uh, I I ask. Uh, what things you are buying? No, it's Deportivo Táchira. And I said, okay, but how many players, how many balls, how many shirts, uh, how many fields? Nothing, nothing. Just um, the, training, the, training, the training equipment for, uh, for, for one day, uh, no changes. And then... And then I said, it's amazing. No, it's uh, it, those guys uh, own a, a club with a lot of history, but this is the only thing that it costs money, the history of Deportivo Táchira. And then we start, we, start, we started in, in 2007 to build a team with zero players, no players, no pro players, uh, no contracts for the future and I start to call my 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 people nose and and build the the, the club uh, and then in one year in one year we 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 are in the challenge you know in 2008 we, we was uh we was champion we uh we did uh, a lot of good things 
not only myself, the, it was a very good team working with me. Juana Suarez, uh, for example, Mino Feroli, and, and the owners in this moment, Rufo John, uh, Camilo Menache, uh, Carlos Sayeg, and it was amazing in, in less than one year to earn it. And what, in what year did your time at Deportivo Tachara finish? In, in 2016. So 2016. you were uh, able to win three league titles during your time at Deportivo Tachara? Yeah. And yeah. how many league titles did you, did you win during your time at Caracas? Five. Five, okay. Wow. So eight, eight titles, eight titles in total during your time as a sporting director. And... Yeah, yeah. When you when you look back at your your periods at Caracas and Deportivo Tachara, do you have uh, fonder memories from one than the other? Do, is is there a, a time in your career that you enjoyed or preferred more? Uh, I enjoy both. It's uh, two big uh, clubs, but uh, two different um, two different sense because um, Caracas is. Uh, uh, tradition is more serious because they own it by a, a big company, pharmacist company, and uh, we work as a company. Uh, and uh, we have all resources at, at uh, our hands to work, to work good. Tachira was different because we faced uh, nothing, no office, no balls, as I said. A few, uh, a few minutes ago, and, uh, and we started by zero. And uh, the passion in, in Táchira is too much different uh, as Caracas. Um, Caracas, in, in, in their moments, um, was a club that uh, there are, um, they don't have a lot of fans behind. Uh, we build it, a lot of fans, we build it, a lot of publicity, uh, and we did some things to, uh, to engage people to, to the stadium, and, and they grow, obviously. And, and with the wins, with the titles, this was easy. Uh, in Tachira, it's totally different. It's the passion, uh, move everything, every decision, that you will 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 take. Uh, you have to think in the passion on the club, in the fans, in the in the media, and uh, it is amazing. I learn I learn from both clubs a lot, and right now, I I when I think in in the two in the two clubs, I think in different things, different moments, and different sense that move me and make me very, very happy. It was a very happy day for me. So from, from being a sporting director of, of Venezuela's two biggest clubs, um, and in those moments as, as well as today, um, do, do, you think it, do you think those two clubs remain the, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch, the, they, they remain as the model that the other clubs in Venezuela should, should try to follow? Because... In particularly in the past two years with the difficulties of, of COVID, um, as well as the difficulties in, inherent in Venezuela for in recent times, we, we've had the league um, bloat to 21 teams and now drop down to 16 for, for the following season. And clubs really struggle um, organisationally off the pitch with, with, with finances. Do you think Caracas and Deportivo Tachara are, are, are templates to, to emulate? Yeah, yeah, there are definitely the, the models for, the, uh, for our football, for the Liga Football, is the two best teams. Um, as I said, uh, there are different clubs, uh, work differently, uh, they have uh, a different history, they have a different minds. Uh, if you see uh, how for the 2022, uh, build the club. Táchira is totally different from Caracas. Caracas is always try to uh, to remain the idea to uh, to develop uh, young young players and try to sell to 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 other better leagues. And uh, Táchira, no. Táchira always think 
in win the title. Every year they build a team for this thing, not for sell players. If sell players, it's okay, but it's not a consequence for the uh, for for the um, for the, the the main idea uh, is for the club. Mm -hmm. And after your your career as um, a sporting director, we we've seen both of those clubs win titles: Caracas in two thousand nineteen and and Deportivo Tatra, like I said, reigning champions in in twenty twenty one. So yeah, the, the league dropping down to 16 teams wasn't a, a decision of the, of the league. It wasn't like the league said, OK, next season we'll have 16 teams. This was a consequence of some teams not meeting licensing and other teams uh, not paying debts that they owed. So it was a, a, a natural wastage, if you like. But a lot of people are, are quite positive about the league becoming smaller, that it, it should make it more competitive, that there's less golf between the top and bottom. What do you think about the, the new format? I am one of them. I think uh, it's good for our league. And uh, also, I think uh, that have to be lower to be more competitive. And uh, I think the, the number is 12, no more than 12. We are not prepared to, to, to have a, a, a very good league with more than 12 12 clubs and uh, uh, almost for uh, six or or 10 years, you know, and then if other clubs uh, organize a very good second league and the uh, clubs grow up and, and do, uh, do better things, we can, we can think about to, to, to have a league uh, with, with um, uh, more clubs. Okay. Uh, 16 but it's okay it's a normal process you cannot cut uh, a lot of clubs uh, in one year uh, I think five was uh, a, a good and right decision uh, at this moment but other clubs like Mineros de Guayana for example was uh, a lot of troubles and uh, they found uh, a savior and uh, uh, somebody to put a lot of money and uh, recharge the club because not for this club was the license problem because they have a very good stadium, uh, good facilities, uh, but they have too much debt uh, in the past and 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 try to fix all of these things no. I think it's good. It will be a very good league with 16 teams this year. Uh, I think they will be more competitive. And uh, but the the only issue that uh, I I does not like it it was the rule. It uh, for me it was a, a very bad decision. Uh, I, I find that in the in the last uh, 12 years. Uh, the rule was impressive, helping uh, clubs selling players, helping players uh, in his development, and helping uh, everybody involved in football. Not only for for the agents, not only for for the clubs. I think uh, the rule is in the mind of uh, each father that have a son uh, playing football because it's it's it is an uh, an opportunity to know if your son at 16 years old can play football as a professional or no right now with no rule you have to wait until 19 or 20 years old to know if your if your son of one of player uh, one player of, of the club can be a professional player, you know, because uh, there are a, a, a lot of hesitate in, in these ages when you, you know, uh, when, you, when you try to know about your future, if you have to study or if you, or if you have a chance to play professional football. With the rule, uh, what happens with the rule? Uh, when you you know that uh, you have an opportunity 
to make your first game uh, 16 or 17 year old, you prepare from 14 and in your mind, in your mind, maybe since 12 years old. But right now, even the players are playing in this moment, uh, born in 2003, 2004, they think that is a, is a bad situation for, for this player because what they gained in the last year, they will lose. I know everybody said, or a lot of people said, that if a player is good, they will play as, as a younger. I think, no. Too much players, if you don't give this chance to play, this chance to get in the pitch and, and the show what, what you can do and wait, uh, making mistakes into four or six games, you will not grow and you will you 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 have a lot of duties in in your in your mind that it will be my profession or not in the past we lost a lot of players very good players i saw in 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 the schools like lasalle san agustin and 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 loyola and other school that that make great football, with great coaches, with great facilities, but these players, they don't have opportunity to play in the first team, to play in professional teams. And, and for me, uh, too much quickly, I have some examples that, that was bad for, for, for the younger guys. For example, uh, Caracas Football Club just signed a contract with the Ecuadorian player born in 2001 it's so only 20 years uh, old and what we are doing we are developing players from other countries what we are doing really and then this is a positions that if you see bonsu also is a young guy akiola is also a young guy and then another one three players playing in uh, as a forward in, in the positions that the players cost too much money than others, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, and what we are doing now. When we, and then when we go to play the next uh, qualification, World Cup qualification under 20, you will see a lot of players with only five or six games in professional leagues. In the past, when we played the under 20, we, we had almost seven or eight players playing outside from Venezuela. And right now, no, if you think right now, the only player 2003 playing uh, uh, outside Venezuela is Winkelman Carmona. No more. And if you, if you draw the next uh, the next national team under 20, you have to put Ronaldo Chacon, Andres Miki Romero, Telasco Segovia, David Teguez, Jose Riasco, René Rivera, Winkelman Carmona, Angelo Lucena, Joan Micolta, and what else? This is good players, but the more the, the best players is Telasco and, and Ronaldo Chacon playing in Liga Football. And those guys have has right now 40 games in first division. Next year we'll have probably 60 games at least. And then this is this mark a big difference when you compete against Colombia that the players not play professional games at 18 years old. Too much players, and the number is, is a very short. And then against Bolivia, the same thing, against Paraguay, Chile, and, 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 and all countries from South America. And then this is that we find too 
uh, to close the bridge, to close the hole between young, between the other countries that, that are with very good performance, as you know, against us. Right now, my, my problem is that what will happen with that? 2003 is the, is the year for the next qualification, but what will happen with the 2005 in the 2025 qualification? How many games will play these players in competitive way in this qualification? It's too hard for us. And it's not the same thing that you play in the second team, in the tournament for the second team, with no visibility, with no uh, crowds, with uh, no pressure, with, uh, uh, with no players in the first division against you. Because right now, our players, when played as a rule, play uh, playoff games that was hard in the in the in the, in the last year the um, the final playoff was a very very good and with the high level it was not easy games and these guys played this kind of games and you think Ronaldo Chacon also Mickey Romero Telasco Segovia playing higher level also Chacon for example playing the final is the best game in, in, in any country in the world, you know, is the final. And he played the final, played 90 minutes in this level. And this will be the difference between these players that played a higher level against players in 2025 with no professional games. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. And then it's a lot of things that I can, I, can, I can talk with you a, a lot that, um, uh, that impact this rule. A lot of things. Also, for example, the agents. We as an agent, if we know that a player have 16 years old, we sign this player at 16 years old because we see that he, he have opportunity to play as a professional player at 18 years old. Right now, no. Right now, if you sign a, a, a player at 16 years old, maybe he, he, he get 20 and he don't play professional games. And how you work about that, how you convince MLS or Argentinian League or European League that a player with no games in first division at a, with 19 years old have to buy and have to pay with a lot of money. We as an agent, we show MLS teams. I said MLS team because it's right now our first market. This is, uh, this is the, really, uh, the really thing right now. But also in Europe, if you show Ronaldo Chacon have 50 games and have uh, 14 goals and have 14 assists is a different price. And, and, and the other team see you as a different way. Yeah. And it's uh, one question I had off of, off of the back of that rule being um, scrapped is that, you know, we've had the rule in Venezuelan football for, for 14 years. And I was wondering if the obligation maybe now an ingrained habit so i asked on i asked on twitter so venezuelan football fans do you expect the majority of head coaches to continue starting at least one under 20 player per game even though there is now no obligation to and 100 people responded 53 people um said yes and 47 people said no it was very very divided do you think Coaches will continue to play under 20 players even though the obligation is gone? Definitely no. Definitely no. Maybe in the, in the, in the beginning of the tournament, maybe, because uh, your, uh, your position as a coach is not uh, in doubt. It's, it's okay. Everybody 
uh, support you in, in your position, but what happens in the middle of the tournament? When, when you have expectations with, with your coach, with your club, to be in the first five positions in the table and you are in the, in the 10 position or you have a, a, a position that you can um, go to the second league. What happened with that? When the, when the, it's a normal situation. I'm not talking bad about the, about the coach. Maybe if, if I was a coach, I do the same thing. If my position is in problem, if I will lose my, my position, my job, just to put a young guy and not put it him, obviously, I'm, I'm not used the rule or I'm not used that. And when you not obligate nobody to put a player, it's, it's, it's thing that the person that faced that have to convince it that the player is good to put the player. But what happens? If you see the, um, the market, the Venezuelan market, you see any young guy, 2003, was moved from a team for another team? I'm, I'm not see one example of that. I'm not see. And then what happens? At all of the, all of the, um, the clubs sign players 2000, 1990, uh, uh, 1919, or older than. And then this is that show us that the young guys is not be the first option for the clubs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sure Telasco Segovia is a starter in Lara, in Caracas, in Táchira, in, in Chelsea. <laughs> Okay, it's, he's an amazing player, also Chacon, also Romero. Okay, this is right. But the other ones, I think not. Yeah, and I, I, I see that, like, that. obviously the, the under-23 league that's coming in um, is, is being spoken of as a replacement for the rule. And, and obviously... In my opinion, it's not a direct replacement. One didn't need to replace the other. League of Football hasn't had a, a functioning reserve league for, I think, since 2019 because of COVID in, in 2020 and, and 2021. Um, and, and this reserve league is going to be a, like an, an under-23 league. But you highlighted earlier in one of your earlier answers that this league isn't going to be visible. Um, you know, a lot of the... A lot of the under-19 games and, and under-17 games from, from regionalized leagues in Venezuela, um, you know, they're not on Instat. They're not on Scout. If they're visible, it's because the clubs themselves have put them on YouTube. But a lot of recruitment is, is lazy. If, if footage and stats aren't provided on Scout or on Instat, recruiters don't look. Clubs don't look. They're not going to sit on YouTube looking at under-19 games in Venezuela. On the whole, that isn't going to happen. Uh, so whilst um, the under-23 league might be good within Venezuela, I think what will happen is you'll get players playing in that league until an older age. So then they're debuting in the first team at an older age. And then by the time they would have hit the same level, they will be 23 or 24. And at that point, you also get recruiters say, if they're that good, they wouldn't still be in Venezuela at 23 and 24. It's like they discount players if they're still in Venezuela by that age. I think that's a one possible consequence of, of this change. Um, another thing I, I suggested is that if the under-20 rule was going to be, be scrapped, it should have been replaced by something else, not the under-23 league, something that still affects the first teams. And, and what I proposed um, just, you know, on, on Twitter for, for people to have their say on is that you could have had a rule where each um, starting 11 needed to have at least three homegrown players regardless of their age, homegrown. And by homegrown, I mean players that have either had three years development at that club prior to the age of 21, so they're youth products, or that player is currently under 20. Because I think with that rule, it would have kept or even heightened the, the importance towards youth development and exposure. 
whilst putting an increased responsibility on clubs to build sustainable and meaningful academies and youth setups. Because it would have allowed, you know, Caracas, for example, Leo Flores is, is 25, 26, but he would have classified as homegrown because he had three years at the club. Echeverria is, is 22, but would have been homegrown because he had three years at the club prior to his 21st birthday. So it, it, it would have kept the it would have kept the pressure on clubs home growing players and, and developing and keeping players, but maybe would have taken off some pressure of the player having to be a certain age. Now it, it, it's happened and we're going to see the consequences, the under 23 league um, and the, the lack of the rule. Um, but what, one thing I wanted to, to discuss with you before we have to wrap this podcast up in, in four minutes is after your experience as a sporting director, what motivated you to step into the world of, of football agency? And maybe you've already highlighted some of the challenges that you have as an agent, particularly with this youth rule, but also what are the challenges that you think um, are, are almost unique to, to Venezuelan football agents? Okay, let, let me let, let me do let me uh, tell you something about the under twenty three league. I'm not. I agree with you. I'm not uh, believing in this league uh, as a as a league to sell players, because as you said, they they don't broadcast with more than one camera, and for the scouts or or. Or sporting directors, it's uh, it's a very bad to to watch a game in YouTube with one camera with uh, with uh, with no real competitive games. You know, it's uh, it's for me is 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 a disaster. And the second league, the under twenty three league, is good, but not scrap the the rule. Okay. This is my big idea. And then we can be too much creative how we can do or what we're going to do uh, to really develop players. But, but this creative was in our hands and we lose it. The rule was good and perfect. As I said two years ago, the rule was perfect in 12 years, what happens? Nobody studied what happens with the with the rule. How we can uh, how we can we improve the rule? How we can change it? Maybe we can change the year. Maybe we can change how we play it. How's the substitution? How whatever, but not could uh, definitely the the rule. Also because at this moment. I'm not fan, or I'm not here, a really, really definition for what they was deleted. Only suppose that, you suppose because that, the uh, coaches suppose that, the club suppose that. But when, when I tried to install the rule in 2007, I make a big presentation uh, explaining all clubs what are the benefits for the rule. And to scrap the rule, just one decision in five minutes. You know, there are not studied, it's my opinion. You know? But uh, uh, we have to wait, we have to wait what will happen, what, we, uh, what the clubs do, what the coaches do about that. I know in this year, maybe still players, young players, because was developed in the last three years, okay? And then uh, they have to, uh, to maintain and to, put, to, to play uh, games in professional league because uh, they they developed in the past, okay? But my, my concern is for 2023, 2024, and for the future. I hope and I wait uh, the people uh, did that uh, change 
this decision and we back to rule for the next years because we was a model for the other countries. If you remember Colombia, for example, was the rule. And when Peckerman uh, came to Colombia, they also scrapped the rules and they changed things, have a problems to go to the World Cup, have a problems to develop players, have a lot of problems. For us, that we are the number nine or number 10 in South America, was a very, very good thing because uh, they bring us a lot of opportunities for, for sell players, for, for give more attractive our league and to produce more money. Uh, I, think, I think that about the, about the rule. As an agent, um, your question, Venezuela is, uh, for us as an agent, it's, uh, it's a hard challenge because uh, outside and uh, in, the, in the leagues, they really don't believe in Venezuelan players. You have to convince, you have to talk, you have to invite them, you have to show how, how the players develop, you have to put a very good examples. And also with that, uh, the, the price of the players is less than others, and maybe our players are best than others. And then, for example, Inter Miami buy a winger from Millonarios by $3 million, Emerson Rodriguez. And if you put his statistics with Ronaldo Chacon, he does not have better statistics than Chacon. And for Chacon, we'll pay 1 million, and for this player, player 3 million. It's an example, it's not the really. The, the Colombian player was uh, selling in $3 million, okay? What was the last player, the last Venezuelan player selling in this price? I'm not remember, no one. The best player selling was uh, Ronald Vargas, 2.4 million but then the players cost the venezuelan player the cost is around one million even soteldo when 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 he uh, went to 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 chile was for six hundred thousand dollars okay the second sell after venezuela it is huge it is okay uh, he sell it to santos in a very good money and the Santos for, for MLS, a very good money, as Otero, for, for example, but directly from Venezuela to outside, the price for best players, it's around one million. And I think uh, this is for maybe for, uh, for the kind of our league. We need to improve our league. We need to improve our broadcast. Uh, yesterday, I saw Santa Fe Junior de Barranquilla, and if you strictly watch the game, what happens inside the, the pitch is not different for, for, for our football. It's not different. You not see different things. You don't see uh, stars. You don't see cracks. You don't see anything. <laughs> but... Uh, but the makeup for the league uh, is totally different. The product, when you, when you watch in TV, is totally different. Why? Because it's 24 cameras, um, it's not fences, uh, it's uh, with a lot of colors in, in, in the pitch. It's a very nice, put it, uh, the spots. Just our final was a very good show. Our final Caracas Tachira, everybody watched in, in TV. They said, wow, amazing what, what they do. But we need more games like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I actually didn't see the final because I was, I was actually, I was in the stadium. So I, I missed what you're talking about. But I, I do know what you mean. And, um, you know, it, it, it's other things like, for example, 
I know it wasn't League of Foot Bay, but watching the Uruguay Venezuela game um, earlier this week and Venezuela Bolivia last week. Uh, just even the fact that the games aren't aren't transmitted in HD is 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 a problem. I think it, it, it's silly things, but like I said, a lot of recruitment can be lazy. And if the video footage is is poor quality or the angle's bad, they they don't watch or it doesn't show the player in their their best way. Um, but let me let me tell you something. You in Venezuela watch in standard definition, but uh, the rest of the world is watching in high definition. Okay. 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 Um, and yeah, while well, picking up on what you said about, uh, you know, yes, and Chacon, Ronaldo Chacon, the same player, and Telasco Segovia, it'd be really interesting to see when they, they do leave Liga Footbay, which I think will be sooner rather than later, um, you know, what they leave for in terms of, um, you know, the structure of the deal and, and their transfer values, because I think they are the two reference points for the next generation players, both who got their debuts under Peckerman. Um, against Bolivia. But that is all we have time for um, today. Kareem, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we can have you back again because it, was, uh, it wasn't just nice to, to interview you, but it was, a, it was an education on Venezuelan football. I think our listeners will very much enjoy uh, listening to this. Thank you so much again and thank you to everyone listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, sorry for my bad English. It's not perfect but I tried to do my best. No, it was good, <laughs> very good, thank you. <laughs> bye bye, thank you.